Uh, you're watching a special edition of Arise News as we continue to assess the developments around Nigeria's 2023 presidential and legislative elections. I'm Charles Anyagul. And I am Adesua Omoruan. And uh, we have received a letter from President Obasanjo, Nigeria's former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, in which he's been analyzing the latest developments around uh, the issues emerging from this ballot and also uh, chipping in to give his um, suggestions and his uh, assessment of the best way forward. Uh, we're, we're preparing a proper graphic of that letter, which we will put up on the screen as soon as it's ready. But in synopsis, he suggested that INEC officials at the operational level have been allegedly compromised to make what should have worked not work and to revert to manual transmission of results which he says have been manipulated and the results doctored. He said that the chairman of INEC might claim ignorance but, but uh, he can't fold his hands and do nothing when he knows that the election process has been corrupted and most of the results that are brought uh, in, uh, brought outside beavers and the server are not a true reflection of the will of Nigerians. He warned that tension is building and called on President Buhari to cancel all elections that do not pass the credibility and transparency test. He suggested uh, many of those moving those elections to March the 4th, uh, those elections that he mentioned were disrupted and that the beavers and the server officials be changed. Indeed, Charles. There's been another letter as well from a former head of state uh, who is also the head of the Peace Committee, uh, Abdusalami Abubakar. In that letter, he is also calling for peace and calm. However, particularly in paragraph 7, which I find interesting, Charles, he says INEC can take all the time it requires to ensure that it delivers results that inspire the confidence of the Nigerian people and meet time-tested international standards. Very interesting indeed. And uh, you can see that this is not just a sort of side side light, sort of a side crisis. It's now big taking center stage. Let's bring in a rise uh, analysts uh, who are with us. Uh, Dr. Constant Ikoku is with us in the studio and in our overflow off-site studio is a rise legal analyst, Chinwe Izebu. Let's come to you first, uh, Constant Ikoku. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, for joining us. Um, this crisis now clearly deepening. Um, yeah. Letters from President Obasanjo, Abdul Salami Abubakar, President Obasanjo pointedly calling for the elections to be cancelled, or at least the places where they were disrupted. What do you make of it? I mean, Charles, it's been a remarkable few days, um, uh, astonishing occurrences from different parts of the country, and there have been heightened levels of agitation. And between yesterday and today, I think uh, many Nigerians are now beginning to make the effort to de-escalate the tension because it's very important that um, people do not start to go out on the streets to begin protests and then you lose, you know, you lose control and then the country comes to a grind. This is a very important election, as we have seen. The whole world is watching, Nigerians are watching. But these two letters from these two former heads of state, in fact, Obasanjo, we know he always writes letters. Mm. Um, he's, he follows everything that happens, he's very active, he speaks out, very vocal. But Abdul Salami Abubakar, it hasn't been very vocal in terms of writing letters and making comments when there, there, there is election. So this is significant that these two men are coming out and speaking out after the elections. And I think one of the reasons why they are speaking out is that they want the country to remain together. They want a united Nigeria. No one wants the country to implode. Because if that happens, where are you going to put all the people in this country? We are more than 60% of West Africa. So when people begin to move out, what are you going to, you cannot handle it. So it is critical that Nigeria is able to manage itself. But the letters are very, very strong. 
they came out saying categorically that there are problems that need to be addressed by the INEC chairman. Yesterday, when the INEC chairman addressed the press, he sort of pretended that nothing was happening. He went on to say, we'll continue with the collation of results. But today, in, in the morning today, he, he, he did similar, but in the evening, he began to say, okay, we will look into the grievances. I think, of course, maybe people have begun to speak to him to say, sir, you <coughs> must do something. This is about legacy. It's not only about you know, the elections. You want to leave a legacy after a couple of elections that you have organized. So this is significant that we are having letters from these two former heads of state. And I want to you know, sort of look at them. So for instance, Abdul Salami, <coughs> he mentioned strongly, he used um, the word, um, he said, INEC must start and escalate investigations wherever you know, people are complaining. Because he also commended, from the beginning, commended Nigerians for coming out. Mm. The turnout has been massive. Okay, so if people have turned out to vote, you cannot discountenance that. You cannot disenfranchise them. So you must do something about it. He mentioned voter suppression, which it seems has been happening across the country. He talked about inducement of voters, uh, deliberate frustrations, um, challenges uh, with uh, equipment. He laid it all out there. And then to Abbasanjo, Abbasanjo also mentioned about legacy. He spoke directly to President Muhammad mm, Buhari. This is about what you leave behind you when uh, you, you, you get out of office. So do you want that? Do you want to be remembered as the president who handed us down mm. uh, a good election or not? So these are my, my, my general thoughts for now. Indeed. I mean, what are the odds, uh, Constance? No point intended that these two uh, former heads of state and former president have things that are constant in their letters. Uh, they're calling for calm and peace. They identify problems and proffer solutions. Uh, but how significant are these letters to occurrence on ground? Do you think anybody's going to even hit these letters? Like you said, former president Olusha Gombasanjo is a serial letter writer. Indeed, he is. So let me tell you something. So on the eve of the election, um, I was talking to a taxi man, and he told me he lives in Suleja. Mm -hmm. uh, Suleja, for those who don't know Abuja, is uh, outskirts of Abuja, so it's a bit of a distance. Mm -hmm. So he told me he registered to vote inside Abuja. He will not go home. He will keep circling and walking throughout the night and then find somewhere to sit down mm -hmm. and sleep in his car because he really wanted to vote. There are so many Nigerians like this taxi man. And I think people like Abu Bakr, former President uh, Abu Bakr, uh, um, and um, former President Obasanjo, they are looking at this and seeing that Nigerians are taking this election seriously. They are saying that we want a new country. We want the country to chart a new, a new path. We want the country to go in a new direction. So we cannot let them down. These people have nowhere else to go. Of course, there is the middle class who have the funds and the wherewithal to live if they want. Majority of Nigerians cannot leave this country. They are stuck here. So I think that is one of the reasons why these uh, presidents are talking. And then, of course, um, the past eight years has been very difficult. Everybody acknowledges that for Nigerians. So this is an opportunity to turn a new leaf. Mm. And I think that's why they're coming out very strong. Well, those are very good points. And, and just to remind our viewers that uh, as soon as we uh, get the uh, INEC uh, people at the Collation Center back up again, assuming they're going to come back, uh, we will take you live to that. But let's take you to our off-site studio where um, Arise Legal Analyst Chinwe Izebu is waiting to talk to us. Thank you very much indeed, Chinwe, to, for joining us. Uh, good to see you again. Um, you, you might have heard us talking about those seminal letters that have just come from former presidents Obasanjo and former head of state uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar weighing in uh, on this evolving crisis now over beavers and the uploading of results from polling units. Um, how much weight do you think uh, will be given to these interventions from these two former heads of state because President Obasanjo is already saying that he's been speaking to President Buhari about this. W what is your assessment of 
the, what the likely reaction is going to be. Thank you very much, Charles and Adesua. Um, this has been the, one of the most controversial elections we have had in recent times. Um, I am very uh, pleased that the two former presidents have weighed in on this uh, occasion because uh, there's been a lot of tension in the polity and uh, it's very concerning. Uh, more particularly, I know that there are no statutory requirements for the INEC chairman to give reasons or give explanations under the Electoral Act as to how the uh, results were arrived at. But having said that, uh, the two former presidents have spoken and their words have persuasive effect, if not legally binding. And I, sh I will be very much obliged if the chairman of INEC would give due consideration to those letters from uh, the esteemed former presidents of Nigeria. Um, also, uh, under section uh, 14 of the Nigerian constitution, we all know that sovereignty belongs to all people, belongs to Nigerians, Nigerian citizens, from whom the governmental agencies draw their powers and authority. So when we look at uh, the number, the huge number of, of people who turned out to vote, it would be most unfair uh, and it would be most, uh, uh, it would be a great injustice to disenfranchise these uh, Nigerian citizens who have come out in hundreds, thousands to, to vote. So I, I would be very, very grateful if uh, the chairman of INEC uh, gives due regard to section 47, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act, which uh, has al uh, already made provisions for uh, technical hitches, because we are aware that there were technical hitches in uploading uh, the results uh, onto the portal, onto the portal uh, uh, system. And it if that if that were the case, that there were technological problems, uh, then I think the INEC chairman uh, would have a, an obligation to all Nigerian citizens and, and, uh, uh, and give reasons as to why uh, those results were uh, being questioned. Uh, 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 more particularly, I believe that uh, jurisprudence says that justice must not only be done, but must be seen to be done. Uh, when we have, even though there are no judges here, when we have the uh, electoral uh, chairman giving us reasons or giving us results of the election, and we don't know whether or uh, how those uh, uh, results were arrived at, uh, there are no electronic tr uh, transmission as uh, that were perfectly in order as we understand, then I think um, the INEC chairman owes the Nigeria uh, the Nigerian Federation, a duty of care, duty to explain, to give reasons as to how uh, the transmission was done from the, uh, from the polling unit to the collation centre. There must be no discrepancy between the, the, the results at the polling station and the certificate of, uh, the certificate of uh, return. Th these are very, very very, very important and significant matters. Since I was uh, called to the bar in 1986, Nigerian Bar Association, I have never ever experienced this sort of tension during elections. And I think uh, people are justified and right to be very concerned. And we all want our votes to count and to ensure that those votes are, have been duly accredited and verified accordingly. Thanks, Charles. Chingwe, let me Thank you. stay with you um, because you know the law. And, you know, looking at these two letters, another thing that is constant between them is uh, the notion that INEC should not be in a hurry. There's no need to hurry up announcement of results when there are problems. Uh, General Abdusalami Abubakar said it. Olusha Gombasanjo, former president, also said it. But 
Let me ask you, Chinwe, I mean, you know the law. Is there anything against the law? Should this collation be stopped for these investigations to be escalated and the problems, like President, former President Shego Ambassador said, right the wrongs? Is there anything against the law? Should INEC take that position to say, you know, we are halting this collation at this point to investigate these problems and come back? Would they be racing against time, against the law? Um, th the Electoral Act uh, gives wide discretionary powers to the chairman of INEC and um, he alone can call the shots under the Electoral Act. Uh, if he does require uh, further evidence, then in it, it is in his discretion to call for such further evidence from all polling units. That may well take a while, but I think the delay is well worth it. Delay is not denied, so I think it's very worth it. And it will be in the interest of justice, equity and fairness for that to be done. It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as we arrive at the correct decision at the end of the day. And uh, let me come to you, um, Dr. Ikoku. I mean, because this innovation, the, the, the actual innovation in this election, which a lot of people, you've talked about this yourself in the past, the innovation was supposed to be this immediate upload of the results to the central server. And this delay, I mean, all these stories around it, it's essentially poured oil on this fire, hasn't it? I mean, with rumors of foul play in a country that has a history of vote rigging and vote buying. You're very correct, Charles. Um, so one of the reasons that we were sold this technology is that to a large extent, it will cut down um, instances of manipulation or people doing what they shouldn't be doing. And people believed it. I mean, INEC assured everybody that this is going to be a well-organized election. And to, you know, they always use the word rest assured, we will do our best to deliver a fantastic election. Uh, you know, to Nigerians, uh, but we are seeing otherwise, not in all states, but in some states. Again, this has to do with uh, human element or human errors or maybe not errors. Some people think that it's deliberate. And I think that Nigeria is changing, but some people are not seeing the change. They want to remain in the past. They want to keep doing things the old way. That's a very significant point. So this is like the kick of a dying horse or dying horses. And the people that want to move the vehicle faster are fighting and saying, this is, your, you know, this is the last chance. It's not going to continue. So people that are used to cheating, gaming the system, insisting that we must continue that way. And a lot of Nigerians are saying no. And this is why you're seeing letters from two former heads of states. Maybe at, you know, these people are old. You know, President Obasanjo and the other president, they are old people. They are looking at what can we give to Nigerians mm. before we pass away? An egalitarian society. Look, you cannot have peace and stability without fair play. You want to have a country that prospers? You want to have a country that functions? You need to have fair play. You need to have justice. If you don't do that, you, you, cannot, you cannot progress as a country. So you have to build a country based on the belief that people matter. The days of, you know, you look at people and you have very condescending treatment of Nigerians as public officers. You are supposed to go to public office to serve. You are not there to serve yourself. And the people that you are serving, it doesn't matter if they're the middle class or the bottom class and they, are, they don't have money. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you ask them to put you there as an officer. You have no right not to take into account what they are saying, their observations. You have no right not to do so. So I think that's why we're seeing this letter. And like I said before, Nigeria is changing. We don't know if it's going to be able to push through in this election, but it's looking like if not completely, maybe it will get somewhere. OK, and uh, just to say, um, uh, Adeshua, that I mean, I, I can't see how President Buhari, who is looking out for his legacy, w would completely ignore all of this. I mean, I expect that there will be some reaction from him at some point soon. Indeed, and it, it should be soon because mm. we've heard him speak repeatedly on home soil 
And on the international scene, when we went to DC uh, last December at the International Peace Institute, he gave a speech and talked about the same legacy. At that point, he said to the uh, international community at the Peace Center in DC that he had given INEC all its all it needed to mm. execute and prosecute a credible elections and that they had no excuse whatsoever. When he went to Onga, the United Nations General Assembly earlier in the year, uh, last year, last quarter of last year, he made that you know, profound speech about credible elections on the continent of Africa, especially at a time when we are seeing rising coups uh, uh, at the so, you know, in the Democracy south region of Africa. Backsliding. So he has to make something. He has to say something at this point. That's a very good point. And uh, let's bring you that piece of news that we've been analyzing. Uh, our correspondent, well, our analysts, uh, Arise News analyst Dr. Constance Ikoku and uh, Chingwe Izebu, our legal analysts, have been uh, chewing over uh, those letters uh, from uh, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, as well as former head of state uh, Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, President Obasanjo, recommending that all elections that do not pass credibility and transparency should be cancelled. He's written an open letter to President Muhammadu Buhari. In it, he says, where beavers and servers have been manipulated, those ballots must be declared void. In his words, quote, it is no secret that INEC officials at the operational level have been allegedly compromised to make what should have worked not work and to revert to the manual transmission of results which is manipulated and the results doctored. Indeed. Well, the chairman of INEC may claim ignorance, the letter says, but he cannot fold his arms and do nothing when he knows that the election process has been corrupted and most of the results that are brought outside Beavers and Seva are not true reflections of the will of Nigerians who have made their individual choice. At this stage, we do not need wittingly or unwittingly to set this country on fire with the greed, irresponsibility, and the unpatriotic act of those who allegedly gave money to INEC officials for perversion and those who collected the blood money. He went on to say, quote, Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, tension is building, and please let all elections that do not pass the credibility and transparency tests be counseled and be brought back with areas where elections were disrupted for next Saturday, March 4th, 2023, and Beavers and server officials be changed. To know which stations or polling units were manipulated, let a committee of INEX staff and representatives of the four major political parties with the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association look into what must be done to have hitch-free elections next Saturday, end quote. And he appeals to Nigerians to be patient until what he says is the wrong is righted. So a, a very powerful letter indeed. And let's uh, come back to you. Uh, well, let's actually, let, let's go to um, Chinwe Izebu, who is in our off-site studio. Uh, Chinwe, a very powerful uh, reminder of the, the fact that People are watching what is happening in this country very, very closely. I, I am assuming that part of the reason, beyond expressing deep concern and, and obviously being driven by developments in Nigeria, one of the reasons these two heads of state are talking about this is because the international community are watching this very closely. And President, uh, uh, former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar said so much in his own letter. Yes, Charles, thank you. Um, Nigeria, as you know, Charles, is the largest uh, democracy in Africa. So the international community, they are all watching us. We are all very, um, very much in the spotlight at this moment. Uh, so it is absolutely vital that we get it right. And if we are not able to arrive at credible election results at this stage, then in accordance with the former president's letter, Olusegun Obasanjo's letter and Abu Bakr, I, I, would, um, I would strongly recommend that the election results be, uh, uh, be suspended and in the interim, another election dates uh, 
and are the election dates uh, are fixed, possibly Saturday, 4th of March, as the highly esteemed former President Olusegun Obasanjo has suggested. Dr. Ikoku, back to you. I mean, like she said, former President Obasanjo is even suggesting a date for the cancellation, for the um, rescheduling of the elections that should be cancelled. But there's a difference in what he has said and what we've seen with some of the major opposition political parties today. Uh, may, while the PDP and Labour Party are calling for total cancellation of the polls, former President Obasanjo is saying, cancel those elections where Beavers and the IREP did not upload results. What do you make of, I mean, those two calls? Should we cancel the entire election or should we go with President Obasanjo who says just those areas that were affected? I would imagine that there are frantic calls going on in Nigeria now between parties, between current leaders, between former leaders trying to manage uh, this uh, unprecedented situation. And yes, during the uh, National Coalition Center today, um, there were so many complaints mm -hmm. from different parties. And um, thankfully, um, the, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu today gave them, you know, years and listened to everybody and, you know, they made those suggestions. Um, I think as the former uh, presidents have said, INEC can investigate what's going on. It, it is possible that the disruptions didn't happen in all the states. Mm -hmm. It happened in some, it didn't happen in, in others. So have an investigation first of all, you know, within the INEC team and find out where do we have serious problems and then where we have the discrepancies as well. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you know, sort of manage it. And those places where it looks like it's, it's totally a sham, then you might have to take the um, advice of former President Olusegun Obasanjo and fix new elections for next Saturday. I mean, f f uh, uh, completely um, cancelling the whole election, I don't know if that would work. It depends. I don't think all the elections were complete sham. I think problems were in some parts of the country. Mm. Well, let, let's bring you in, uh, Chiwe, because um, it would be good to get your take on, on what we were just discussing right now. I mean, at least two of the main uh, front-runner parties, uh, the PDP and Labour, are calling for these elections to be cancelled completely. Um, what is your reaction to what they're saying? Do, do you think that from a legal point of view, that is something that is uh, feasible and perhaps the best way forward? Or, or would you align with President Obasanjo, who's suggesting that there should be some selection in the cancellation of elections? Well, uh, where there were... Tech Hello, can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you loud and yes. clear. Yes, where there were technological hitches, the polling units, where there were technological hitches, I would suggest that those polling units be reconsidered uh, for a new election on, on the 4th of March, as the president, as the former president suggested. Um, to cancel the entire election would be highly expensive. And uh, Nigeria is still going through a lot of uh, uh, economic uh, hardship. It would not be in the interest of our economy to invest yet again uh, billions of naira to uh, uh, start uh, polling and start elections all over again. Having said that, Charles and Adesua, section 47, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act actually empowers the INEC chairman to cancel election results where there were disruptions or where there were technological hitches as we have in some polling units. And I think that the INEC chairman may well uh, uh, refer to that uh, uh, empowering section 47, subsection 3 to enable him to cancel uh, results of elections where uh, those polling units uh, uh, they, they were not accurate or they were not credible or there were disruptions. As many, many uh, people have reported, 
there were quite a few uh, problems in, uh, in, in um, uploading the results onto the portal. So that, for example, could be an area where the INEC chairman may well uh, need to look at again. And uh, even if not to cancel all uh, the whole, uh, even if not to cancel the entire election, but to cancel those polling units where we have had uh, difficulties and challenges. Charles. Okay, thank you. Um, you're going to take us to Yanagoa then? Indeed. Well, hold your thoughts, guys. Dr. Koku and Ching will be right back. Let's cross light to Yanagoa, the Barrios State Capital, where Rice correspondent Ovietime George is standing by to give us an update. Hello, Ovietime. Uh, what's happening where you are? Thanks, Adeswa and Charles. Well, after the postponement of 141 polling units in four wards in Yenagoa local government area, they all returned to the units and performed their civic duties yesterday being Sunday. And in the evening, results started coming in. First to be taken was Kolokuma Pokuma local government area yesterday, and then Nembe. But Nembe proved a very naughty issue to crack. It rolled on, and then there was uh, a recess to reconvene at 11 yesterday. We reconvened, and it was postponed to today. Again, it proved a very naughty issue to crack with irreconcilable figures. And so other local government areas were taken. Ekeremo local government area, Ogbea local government area, and Sagbama. And much later, eventually, Nembe with the decision here that perhaps the de it could be decided in Abuja because of the dissenting voices amongst the chairman and representatives of the various political parties. But that's the situation now. Results have come in for five local government areas while we await that of Brass, Yenagoa, and the littoral local government area of Southern Ijo. That's the situation at Eswa. Well, thank you very much indeed, Ovia Teme. And uh, whilst we're with you, I, I wonder if you might weigh in. Um, I don't know if you've heard some of the issues around this election now that are starting to percolate to the surface. Uh, lots of issues, questions, uh, people calling for these elections to be cancelled. Uh, two former heads of state weighing in and uh, supporting uh, calls for at least uh, a, 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 an important investigation and a review of, of this ballot to, uh, to take place. Um, are, are people reacting to any of that at all uh, where you are? Well, Charles, it is now a national issue. It's the subject of small talk when few persons converge or gather talking about the outcome of the presidential elections. But it is also understandable uh, with the fact that this is at the state level, while that is at the national level. So when the results are, are completely announced, perhaps people will begin to talk about that. Of course, you mentioned two former heads of state or president weighing in. So that's how it stands for now. But the good thing about Bielsa is the people seem to understand the fact that it is quite crucial and the fact also that there's brotherliness. But I know along party lines, there would be dissenting voices about the recent development at the INEC Collation Center in Abuja. But that's just how it stands for now. People are a bit concentrating on the three local government areas that are yet to be announced, figures here and there. But it is also pertinent to wait for the Independent National Electoral Commission to do its job down here. But I tell you, like you mentioned earlier, it is a subject of controversy where people will begin to react after the three local government areas are mentioned in Yenagoa. Charles. Okay, Ovietema, for the moment, thank you very much indeed. Ovietema George is talking to us from Yenagoa there, the Bielsa state capital. And it looks like we're going to be going back imminently mm -hmm. to INEC, the, um, National, the National Collation Center, because they're continuing regardless. You know, and we raised this issue that despite the calls by the major opposition political parties and others who have walked out, staged the walkout, and then these letters, 
INEC may likely proceed with this mm. uh, collection of results. There are diver diverse views already, Charles. Uh, you hear a situation where some civil society organizations say uh, the fact that Beavers didn't work or is not uploading as sh it should be doesn't invalidate the results that are being declared here. Mm. Uh, you know, however, the political parties are saying that the figures don't tally. Okay. Uh, let, let me say a, a very quick goodbye to you, Constance, Dr. Constance Ikoku, and of course, Chinwe is over there. Thank you very much indeed. And let's take you straight away back to the National Collation Center. 211. 1211. Total ballot votes 920,531. 920,531. Total rejected votes, 34,274, 34,274. Total vote cast, 954,805 votes, 954,805. Sir, so the result as presented. Okay, thank you very much, Scope. Um, any reports of cancellations or places where elections were not held? Yes. The numbers and the reasons? There was some cancellation in 20 local government areas, 41 RA, a 50 PUs, and it is as a, a total number of council board, 52,000. 846, 52846, and it is as a result of overboating and malfunctioning of BMAS. Okay. Any comments? Any suggestions? Yes, there is a hand there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, when some party officials walked out. I stayed back not because I want to endorse or endorse the process that's ongoing. I stand back in protest with the continuous process. I will explain. During the last session, I pointed you, sir, to section 64, and I'd like us to treat that. 64, subsection 4, A and B. You said you were going to address it. You didn't say a word about it. We can't continue like this. If the process says the results must have been uploaded before they are presented here, why aren't we following that? Recall, when it was time for, you to, for us to upload agent on the portal, you followed the law strictly when it was time for us to do all the process as stipulated in the Electoral Act, you follow this strictly. Now my question is, because I speak for my party, the African Action Congress, I can't understand why we're not addressing something as serious as that. People are completely upset. My party members cannot understand why this has continued. Please, Mr. Chairman, why is the Electoral Act not being followed during this process? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any further comments? Remember what I said at that time, and recall what some other party leaders also said, or a party agent said. They referred to that section of the law, and also referred to the section of law that empowers the Commission to review. And we are going to review on the basis of the complaints that we received from you which at present we have not received, of discrepancy between what is here and what your agents brought from the field. This will be done. So please, if you have any observations, any comments, or any discrepancies, please point this out. Tomorrow, I will speak on the issue of the IREV. Right now, our engineers are working on that to upload what remains to be uploaded on the portal, I will speak to it. Any other comment? Any other comment? Okay. So thank you very much. Um, Scope, can you please bring?
the results so that thank you Did he use the continuation in addition to? Can you sign in the stamp? Okay. What about EC four two G? Okay. Um.